we want to go ahead and get started. All right, first agenda item is the previous minutes. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about them? <clears throat> no, all looks pretty good to me. All righty. Then we will go on to the election results, which is you, Sean, because you're the only one who knows them. Oh, no, I sent it to the CentOS board list, but uh, the election results are in and the board has uh, board has selected Jeffrey Oja Mixon to be our next director. He is here waving at us. Jeffro, I don't know if you want to say a few words, thank the Academy, whatever. I would like to thank the Academy. I uh, didn't know there was an Academy, but I'd be, I'd be glad to be kicked out of it at some point. So just so I, I think I know probably half the people on the list. Uh, I work in Red Hat's uh, open source program office in the office at CTO. Uh, I'm currently a community architect uh, focusing on automotive. I'm the chair of the CentOS Automotive SIG, and uh, I've been around open source since the early 1990s. So good to see everybody. I'm glad to be here. On the technical end, I know I'll need to add him to uh, the CentOS board private mailing list or have him added. I don't know who has admin on that. I'm not sure what else technically needs to be uh, done. Um, yeah, I don't know if there space. was a. I don't know if there was a list kept when Celeste and I joined. Yeah. Um, I, I have like, this what? weird recollection of there being a list that Rich drew up, but I will not promise that it is not a memory from days of Fedora past of it being a list <laughs> for Fedora <laughs> council members being added. But the one thing that I would point out is um, there are IRC channels that require invite and moderator status. And I don't know if that ever actually got resolved, that but should it have been resolved, he would need to be added to that list. I am not on those lists either, which is a challenge. Um, I think someone said Jim was the owner of the IRC list. Yeah, we, we need to fix the IRC permissions. So we can take that as an action item. That's something we or not use IRC. Well, or not use IRC, but do we have it? not to use IRC is also an action item. <laughs> Either way. True. True. I mean, most of us are there anyways for SIG meetings and other things. So I don't yeah. think anyone would need to actually add IRC to their normal workflow. So it might make sense to stay there just to have another chat um, opportunity. But Amy, I know the uh, I know the person inside of the the organization that runs the the CentOS IRC channels. Um, I don't know if he actually has access to that specific channel or not. If only Jim has that, but I can ask him so I can take that for action. Okay, great. And, and um, get people added. So just send me an email that has the the IRC name of the person that we want to add, and I'll uh, I'll see if if he has access to that channel. All right, we'll need to track down everyone's IRC handles. But thank you for taking that on. So ongoing discussions um, sent to us Dojo. We're in Boston next week on Wednesday. Has everyone gotten hotel rooms if you're going and registered if you're going? Who all is going? I cannot because of work. Okay. So far that I know for sure aren't going is yourself, Bex, and Thomas. I'm assuming everyone else says I have not heard they're not going are going. I, I am not going to be going either, Amy. This is Johnny. Okay. Uh, Jeff Rowe is not going. Sorry. Okay, so that's five. Too late. There's still hotel rooms. Um, um, as, as much as possible, it'd be great to get the um, invites for the virtual attendance out pretty quickly. Um, I actually have limited childcare next week. So like, I want to make sure that I can plan to be as present as possible. Okay. 
Sean does that hat does have that on the community architect update on the agenda. So we'll get all the time zones straightened out and decide when we're meeting and what's of importance to different people and try to make sure everyone who wants to get to a certain session can get to a certain session. All right, um, next dojo would potentially be FOSDEM 2023. There still is no dates or information on whether it'll be live. I've, I've been watching them and it's, it's getting pretty late in the year to, to not have any updates, but. And we may need to reach out to them because I think we need to do more publicity if we're gonna be there to try to get as many people as possible there. Um, like next on the agenda is the face-to-face -face board meeting, which is kind of part of the dojo in Boston next week. Um, does everyone have access to the agenda we were discussing? It's on the HackMD. I might need to put um, Jeffro on that. Yeah, that's another place we're going to have to add him. Yeah. Um, I thought I had it open. Hang on, I'm still looking for it. Ah, here we go. So the, some of the topics we thought were important is what makes CentOS successful to you. Um, that was proposed by Sean. Um, ironing out the kinks and gaps in our governance policy which was proposed by Josh. And I agree that's important. Um, how should the board, how should the board should be involved at technical levels? So we need to clean the language up on that. But, um, and that was also by Josh. SIG governance, another one from Josh. Um, shifting the board to active, which was by Bex. So we definitely wanna be, have that one at a Bex friendly time zone. Um, one I proposed is where do we want to be in five years? So we can start planning on goals and things we want to reach. Um, some of them might be stretch goals and some of them might be realistic goals. And might, some of them might be like easy wins, but I think we need to plan out where we want to be in the future. So those are technically what we have for the agenda as it stands right now from the HackMD. Um, Is there anything that, I mean, Bex, I'm assuming any ones you tagged yourself on that are important to you, especially the one that you proposed. So we'll make sure those are in your time zone. Anything, Johnny, Celeste, Jeffro, that you wanna make sure that you are available for? I don't wanna speak for Thomas, but I am under the assumption that things will run in Eastern time and I accept that. Okay. I'll do my best. Yeah, oh, for a minute, I, I mean, thought you were in the accelerator, then you moved. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffro specific, and so I think, um, I mean, this is what I have at the end of the agenda, but um, uh, yeah, it's going to happen in Eastern time, but maybe I don't know what, what's the best kind of block to do that doesn't make Jeffro wake up at five in the morning and doesn't make Bex and Thomas stay up super late. So I mean, I don't I want to screw with the schedule of everybody being on, on in Boston. So just don't mind us too much. We'll try to, I mean, try to do your best, but uh, I mean, it's our fault if we are not here. So just don't, uh, don't screw your schedule for us. Uh, we'll try to adapt to the best we can. I can't promise because it's the same as Bex. Uh, depending on, on ch childcare, I will have to, to run around, so. Yeah, so I'd say like just um, if there's a topic you're super interested in, uh, just make sure you mark yourself as interested in the hack and D, and then we'll we'll shuffle things around so that you know things that you and Bex are really interested in, we make sure that they're maybe earlier in the day. Um, so we'll figure it out. Okay, well, I will. And I'm adding one David hat onto the hack and D which is why I look confused right now. I'm trying to type. Remind me because I, I'm, I am negligent in remembering. Um, 
what day and where physically uh, are we going to be doing this face-to-face? -face? Uh, on, on, the, on the 20th, which is the, the final day of DEF CON, so you're missing the final day, and um, it's GSU room three something. Um, I don't remember the exact room, but it, it's in okay. the same building that DEF CON is in. So. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, I'll clean it up a little later, but um, David's topic of what can we do to make joining easier? Um, and he's talking about external projects, vendors, and so on to get them involved. So I've got that added to the agenda. All right. Is there anything else we need to discuss today about the board meeting? Sean, were you going to send a calendar invite with that info, or do you want do you want some help with that? Just so we have it. Yeah, I can do that. Um, okay. Yeah. What what do we want to just what time do we want to have as our start time? Um, or I mean, do you want me to send individual invites for to like really plan out the sessions, the topics we're talking about, or just one big old calendar invite for the day? I uh, think I'm totally. Going big old invite like yeah i'm i'm yeah. totally fine with that a start time would be good though like <laughs> well and that's kind of um, what we need to decide on jeffro i'm assuming you're a pack uh no i'm actually pacific coast oh, okay so that's not too too bad um well it's not too bad to us but it's quite a stretch to europe so no 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 is, yeah but it, it's 3 hours different than more than that. Right. Um, Do you want to start at maybe 10? That would be uh, 7 a.m. for Jeffro. And, and what is it, four hours to Europe right now? Five. Oh, yeah. Five? Oh, that's pretty late for you guys. I was thinking. 7 a.m. is 4 p.m. Central European time. Are you opposed to waking up at five or six, Jeffro? Um, biologically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I, I can be present, but if you want me to actually be coherent, then, okay. then probably not. Five? I can also catch up. Okay. It's six hours off from, from Eastern, US Eastern to Central European. <laughs> Thing. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm used to being in central time. Because if, if we had a 9 a.m. start, that would be six for Jeffro. And three for Europe. Yeah. Will that work for folks? Okay. I so, think I can survive once for sure. Okay. So let's figure a 9 a.m. start. Um, and we'll concentrate on issues that Bex or Thomas might have tagged themselves in, and we'll do those first. And if there's, you know, so we'll concentrate on getting things that they're interested in or proposed first. And that way, topics that may not be of much interest to them, we'll do later in the day. If that works for folks, I think it, that's as friendly as we can get. Celeste, you're going to be on East Coast time, but just can't get there? Yeah, so I'll be in and out throughout the day. Okay. All right. So at least we don't have to worry time zones for you. Okay. Do we want to plan to break and go out for lunch or do you do y'all want to like just get some delivery in or something and have a working lunch? Let's see where, I mean, I, I know it's hard to say this, but let's see where the, we get the schedule timing wise. I mean, if there's some, you know, if, if 
if we get everything that the folks in Europe want to do early enough that we can break for lunch, Jeffro can take a nap and then we can start again. <laughs> so let's organize this a little better and work on the schedule. So if you are interested in something, please tag yourself so that we can move things around. Um, and I apologize for Dalmatians barking. It's the nature of cats. I, when we started this meeting, my cat decided to attack his tail. Like, they just, That's they the want best thing no about people. COVID is no one cares that your animals are doing things anymore. Before mm. COVID, oh my God, your dog is barking. <laughs> All right, anything else we need to discuss right now on the board meeting? All right, um, moving on, I added the alternate images proposed SIG here. Um, I wasn't sure if there was anything we were ready to talk about again right now, but I didn't want to skip it if there was. So I've been um, I've been working with Troy to fill out the template, and he's he's got that mostly done and it's ready. So we're going to try and get that published on the wiki sometime this week, and then he's going to be in Boston uh, for some of the DevCon festivities and stuff. So uh, he may end up uh, just sort of informally chatting with some of you folks on the board about some of that stuff and and trying to dig up one of the uh, executive sponsors and all that stuff. And he is presenting about it at the uh, the dojo. Yeah. Uh, as a part of that process, uh, Troy mentioned that some frustration with the docs surrounding that process. Do we know where that doc is and how we can fix it, or do we at least yeah, know so where the doc is? We, we do. Uh, part of the SIG guide didn't get transcribed over to sigs.centos.org whenever the SIG guide was translated into the uh, the new format. So we're working on getting that translated over. Okay. So if you need help typing random stuff, I can type things. Um, so if you just need someone to like edit stuff, let me know and I'll give you my opinion on your writing. But I suspect you probably got it well in hand. Just wanted to make sure that didn't get lost because doc is always tricky, but super important. Okay. Um, actually, it will be recorded. Going on in the chat is also a discussion on Johnny's action item to get us access to the... Um, IRC channel. Okay, so we do have one new issue that came in, issue number 82, clarifications and open questions concerning the possibility of SIGs creating content for RHEL. And as I understand it, that actually is the goal of CentOS so that things can be contributed and sent to us and they will make it into RHEL. So um, I do not think the person who proposed this is here. Yeah, I've, I've been talking with Peter a little bit. Like, so some of these, um, some of these are definitely technical questions because uh, this comes from the fact that we, so we've got build routes that you can build against that are CentOS stream based in CBS. Uh, so you, as your SIG, can consume stream and, and build your stuff against it. You can also in, uh, consume uh, RHEL itself in CBS. So if you want to build some against something that Red Hat has actually released, we provide RHEL to, uh, to SIGs to build against as well. Some of these are, are technical questions about where that content should land. Um, and honestly, we're still sorting some of that stuff out just so that we know like where does it land on the mirrors and since we don't have a um we don't really provide an extras repo anymore for uh centos linux or and we wouldn't provide one necessarily for rel but uh you know what do you do with the centos release packages and, and stuff like that so um and, and i haven't um, to be honest I, I just saw this issue on the board 
tracker. And so I haven't read through it 100%, but I think a lot of these are, are uh, technical in nature and we can handle in the, uh, in the infra space. Peter, is there anything what you want to add to this? Uh, just adding, so I mainly created the issue because some, so we already have some issues in, in, in Centers Infra open for that. And uh, in some issue, this was mentioned that we might need some answer by the board. So I just wanted to open it to make sure that we have the answers we need. And if you don't need any answer from the Centrist board and uh, Infra can handle it on its own, totally fine for me. Um, just one question that's open for me is the um, timeline. So I don't know, as a SIG, I want to know how for what I can tell my users. For how long will we produce content for Red Hat, for, for the RHEL? And that might be something the board should decide. So if will the RHEL 8 target vanish once once uh, central stream 8 is gone or will it stay till the end of the maintenance support phase yeah i would like it to stay forever uh to a, a certain level even a wee bit past the end of the rel 8 life cycle just so that if you've got anything you want to sort of tie up with a for example depreciation rpm where you want to put something in there, you know, hey, CentOS Stream 8 K mods for RHEL 8 has gone end of life. Here's an RPM that puts that message of the day. If that's a thing that you think your users won't kill you for, that might be a helpful thing to be able to do after the end of life for 8 so that you can put an a, a annoying depreciation nag in there so that people can know clearly and unambiguously you installed something that's end of life. So for me, I'd like to see them stick around, uh, particularly for the K mods. You've put so much work into getting those automated and just building that I'd love to see those just go on for kind of ever, as long as there are kernels to build against. Well, I mean, for, for, the, for the things that you're building against RHEL, I would think it would be up to the SIG to decide what their policy is going to be as far as do they want to continue to build stuff against RHEL or do they not, right? I mean, they're already not building against Stream. They're building for RHEL on CBS and they're building it to release on RHEL. Um, they should be able to decide when they wanted to, to make that go away. In fact, they should be able to decide... Um, the SIG should be able to decide when they want to make anything go away, right? They, they're not under any, the SIG's not under any obligation to provide anything for any period of time. If they wanted to, if they wanted to set a two year, like, like, like we do on some, like Red Hat does on some of the, on some of the modules, if the SIG wanted to set a two or three year period to support certain things and support other thing and newer versions after that point, that would totally be up to the SIG to decide what they wanted to do. The chairman of the SIG and, and the people that run that organization, right? It wouldn't have anything to do with, uh, with us making decisions. So I don't think, I don't think well, we have that, a. Uh, and I think that the underlying question here is, so uh, we provide rel bits into cbs just as a um you know from an infrastructure perspective so you have something to build against in the build routes the question as i interpret it and you, you can correct me if i'm wrong but the question as i interpret it is how long will infra provide rel as a build route in cbs and that's a that's a question that we um we've been looking into because we've got the um, uh, we do that with um the, the technical details are we do it under a subscription that allows us access to all of those bits, but uh, we need to figure out the terms of the of that subscription. And that seems to me like a, you know something we can handle in infrastructure and get an answer on how long we can provide those build routes in CVS. Unless the board thinks uh, for some reason we should, um, uh, you know, we should cut that deadline short or something. I think we should delegate this to Infra and say, you know, support the. Uh, build roots and CBS for as long as our subscription allows. Yeah, and as long as we have the resources, Thomas has something he wants to add. 
Yeah, I was just wondering what, um, on Red Hat point of view, what is uh, going on with Apple? Should we align with Apple? Because Apple has the same problem, I guess, right? So Apple yeah. already builds against RHEL. Yeah, my point is they have the same problem uh, that we will have if we support build root in CBS. So that would be a good, a valid point to see what uh, they agree uh, in terms of license and thing. And after uh, maybe yeah. align on that or seeing what we can do. Because I, I'll be in favor of keeping it forever as well. Because uh, uh, we we have kind of people that stay long on distro, and it would be nice to have came out uh, long after uh, everything else is dead. But uh, again, this is my personal view, not, uh, not, not, not the board, uh, not necessarily what I would choose uh, at the board level, but um, yeah, uh, I think just having the experience of uh, Apple guys would be nice as well. And uh, my question to Bex was, is there any objection on that uh, you think of from Red Hat? Do you need to bring it back to Red Hat or? Um, I think that it's important for someone from the Infrasig to approach Red Hat to ensure that the subscription is used within the expectations because the subscription, yeah, yeah. The subscription may actually have been given additional rights by accident because it was easier internally to manage SKUs or whatever. Um, that said, I think looking to Apple for guidance is the right choice. Uh, from my perspective, I'd be happy to give a stronger affirmative since I've had a conversation with one individual um, who is not, whoever is making a lot of static in our conversation right now. Um, but I think we can get there from here. Obviously, the board would need to know if if we can't build for the lifetime of if, if we can't build rel things for the lifetime of rel, then then that would need to be something that we put out on the CentOS Dev channel that says um, rel builds are gonna we're gonna lose the ability to build against rel at a certain time so if it's gonna if it's gonna last till the end of at least till the end of life i don't think we have to make any kind of announcement but if it's going to be shorter for some reason then we definitely need to get a get ahead of that and let people know as soon as we know that it's not going to go all the way to the end what i'm getting from this conversation is we actually want it to go a little longer than rel and i think that's where the question of the license is going to come in so that if we want to keep it say for six months after if we've got the infrastructure and we can handle it you know let it stay around for six months so people can migrate off and, and well, start doing their stuff and there's two and there's two things right one thing is the stuff that's already built i don't see that ever going away it'll be archived somewhere so people will have access to the things that we built, right? It'll be in an archive. It may not be live in the normal place, but it'll be in an archive somewhere so people can look at it. And then also, how long can we continue to create content, which is a different question than stuff that's already completed? I, I will tell you that uh, from my perspective, it would be helpful to have a little bit longer than rel defined in the question because there are other interpretations of that statement which will not be acceptable. So I want to understand exactly what's being asked for so I can get us the right answer. Yeah, because we, we, we don't want to give the false idea that we will support it until the end of ELS support of this kind of thing. So yeah, we I think this is we need to agree on a, on a end of rel plus few months, but not something crazy either. Well, and I don't think our subscription has access to the ELS stuff anyway, right? So, Clearly, so we yeah. aren't going to have any of those. We aren't going to have any of those add-on packages, no matter what we do. I think we should just, uh, when we enable the build root uh, for each of the version of RHEL, just agree that it will be the end plus like uh, three months, so people have time to move on. But yeah, I don't think we should. We, we can, I don't think we can go uh, much over that after, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, my, my feeling is uh, in terms of, uh, of so license, is... security update and everything, it will be hard to, to go over, over something like that. All right, so and... are, we, are we saying we want to ask, have Bex ask for three months extension past the end of RHEL? Is that the time frame we want? I don't know what is reasonable, to be honest, but Mike has something to say, so go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Mike. I just want to say that um, 
REL has a long and complex life cycle with a number of milestones where uh, the, uh, the support changes its nature. So um, I, I don't know if it's useful to talk about the end of REL as a singular uh, point in time. Um, particularly with the, uh, with, as Johnny's saying, the, the, the RPMs don't go away. Um, so I think with, uh, with your license that at some point you will lose access to the, the repos for, uh, for downloading them. But uh, we offer, I think that's part of extended life to, to get that. So um, if you want to, if we want to access the RPMs past that point, I think that's something we could certainly work out. Um, but more importantly, at that point, that's so far down the road that I'm not sure it's gonna make a big difference for us to support it plus or minus a few months when we get to that actual ragged edge of rail lifespan. Um, My inkling would be to phrase it something along approximately three months after the end of maintenance support phase two or maintenance support phase, whatever it's called these days. Yeah, whatever doesn't whatever doesn't require a separate subscription, basically. Yeah. X, you had something. Sorry, I wasn't on mute. Um, yes. So I, I'm just I'm just going to say I, I'd like to see it explicitly stated what people are after, because I feel like the conversation here could be interpreted as we would like to get updates for three months after the end of maintenance phase and then cut them off. The conversation could be stated as we would like to have access for three months after the phase. I've also heard reference to the subscription um, that happens to be in use here. What I'd rather hear from the board is what do you want to have happen explicitly? And then we can adjust the subscription or access, et cetera, to meet that goal or wherever we meet in the middle, whatever that happens to be, rather than calling out to these external pieces that may be either undefined, indefinable, or just randomly part of whatever SKUs were handed out at the moment. Well, and, and so I, I think the first question is, based on what we're, based on what we're building from right now, what is that life cycle of that specific? I mean, what's the intended life cycle of the of the thing we were given access to in the first place? So before we can before we can do anything else, we need to know what is that. If if that's just a normal rel type lifetime where it goes away at the end of, I, I, I would assume that it would certainly go away when ELS is required, right? So I, I was assuming that was going to be what we have. But before we can make any other decisions, we really need to know what it is that that we have access to right now, right? What what are the rules? I, I would encourage with? starting from the position of what is it that we want, not necessarily what has been delivered today, on right. the basis yeah. that the board can articulate a desire for how SIG should be able to support their consumers um, in a way that makes sense for the project. And then we can figure out if that's possible to deliver from the Red Hat side and if we can agree to deliver it. But I'd rather well, start with that statement than start with some definition of what has been delivered, potentially may not have any relevance to what we actually want. Well, what makes sense to me is if we're calling something. So, so, so we have two things we can build against. We can build against stream and we should make that available until stream stops being available, in my opinion. And we also have SIGs have the ability to build against RHEL to support RHEL. And if, if we want to do that, if, if, we're, if we're allowing people to do that, I think we should allow that support to happen as long as RHEL is in normal open support. Um, the general support period for RHEL, so the end of the, the period, um, the end of the normal 10 year life cycle for, for standard rail deployment 
that doesn't require any kind of ELS. I think that should be the goal. And then if you wanted to, again, I don't expect any updates to happen. I wouldn't expect any updates to happen after that if I were running RHEL on a server in my office. So I wouldn't expect us to get any updates after that either. Anything we already built, I would expect to stay available for th a couple months so that people can move off. But I wouldn't expect more things to be available than that. So that would be what that would be my goal or my logic if I was thinking about it. Um, and so that that would be what I would like to push for personally. I don't know what anybody else has to think about that. And we can I, dis we can take this discussion offline if we need to. And there's some good discussion going on in the chat if you haven't read it yet, Johnny. Um, but Josh, you're next, and then Pat. Yeah, briefly, I think the chat actually helps quite a bit, uh, the conversation. What else would help the conversation is to decouple the word life cycle and support from it, because really what we're talking about is availability in the build group, and that's about it. Um, and so if that is the, the basic goal here of making RHEL available in the build group for a certain period of time, uh, we can remove the word subscription from it as well, because you can go get a free developer subscription and get access to RHEL 4 or even older. Like Red Hat makes content available by default. We don't remove content from your, uh, from your subscription if you already have it. So my suggestion would be, uh, let's take Peter's um, chat messages in terms of clarification and have the infrastructure team go off and figure out the subscription side and then basically come back and say, okay, this is what will be available and for this amount of time. Pat? Uh, my thinking is I've got a good sense as to what Bex is specifically asking for, uh, what Johnny is describing and the workflow Josh has proposed. So I was going to assign myself a job to write the thing Bex asked for that describes what Johnny's looking for so that we can follow Josh's workflow. Does that work? Yes, and also check with the Apple folks because Beck said that would make his life easier if we can follow the same time, time frame. Perfect. And we'll add these comments to the issue when we're done. Um, I'll try to remember everything. Um, Ongoing issues, number 67, trusting the SIGs by default. So it's our usual secure boot. Do we have any updates on that? All right. The latest I have, um, okay. yeah, so the, the latest I have, we've got the hardware in the data center, it looks like. We just need some folks to walk it from the docks to uh, the actual cage, and then we'll get started. The, uh, the bootloader team has offered some consulting. Uh, the bootloader team at Red Hat, I mean, has offered some uh, consulting after that's done to get uh, the root of trust set up and, and all that stuff. Nice. Awesome. Hang on, I gotta. Okay, I think that makes sense. Um, number 79, recording historical SIG membership. No updates, GDPR concerns. I don't have any updates. Okay. On, uh, yeah. Number 78, clarify CentOS errata policy. Somebody said they'd have more info before the next meeting. Uh, Davida said that he was going to work on that. He sent out a thing uh, while he was on an airplane yesterday or the day or on Monday coming up here. Oh, okay. He had some time to make massive edits and yes. clean it up. And yes, I haven't. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I owe him a read of those edits. So I, I saw that come through, but I haven't had a chance to read them yet. And yes, I totally, yes. I opened it up and I totally brain farted that that was this issue. Um, so yes, we do have progress on that. And he has significantly reworked it and expanded the document. So we do have progress there. And I read it over and it looked great to me at the time, but I was 
going between meetings, so it needs a more thorough review. Okay. But it sounds like if we all give it a, a review between now and the next meeting, we should be good to go on that. So good work, everyone, especially David. Number 71, using the new brand word mark typeface with the old logo as a transi transitional measure. But we're now using the new logo. We don't I think have we meant to close that last month. Yeah, close yeah. this to Kindles. All right, tell some tickets to spend. Sorry, my bad. This one I didn't close. I will do it right away. OK. Um, so let me move that up while I'm in here. Oh, you already did. Okay. Issues on hold. Number three, getting official CentOS images into Azure. Any updates there? Um, I don't have anything for that this week or this okay. month. Number 27, providing official AMIs in Amazon CN regions. Uh, I haven't heard back from David on that either. Okay. And last one is number 80, CentOS Stream 9 in WSL. Yeah, so we're, we're still hoping to tackle that at the same time as uh, number three there. Uh, okay. But I don't, I don't have any updates that I can share on that either. Okay. Sean, you're up with the community architect updates. I think uh, the only thing I had on there was to really was to hammer out the schedule. I think we kind of talked about that already early in here. So um, I don't think I have anything else to add into this. Alrighty, we have no SIG reports. Um, uh, have we gotten the things sorted out? So Celeste is getting our emails. Oh, Celeste, good question. Yes, we got that fixed. Now, That's oddly enough, I did not get the board election email. Oh. But that's why I said only Sean knew the answer to that. But yet <sighs> I did get Bex's email from earlier. So you about, got my my um, my first, my previous email, like the. Then you were missing one like, person. Yeah, I got that then, one. Uh huh. I did not get the results, but I got Bex's um, Dublin one from earlier. The, the results were in the same thread yeah. that said we're missing a person. So it didn't show up as a separate one <clears> in case you missed that part. Right. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. I will dig down and look for that then. Email continues to be. Poor. <laughs> it's, well, it and then a, you end up with stuff that goes into spam that shouldn't go into spam. Yes. Email I, I received all of them at least, if, if it reinsure you. <laughs> as, as a protocol, it was a brilliant design in the 70s. Um, we've come up with better ideas for how to do message passing, but it's just too baked into life. We should just go back to send mail in. Pine, I'd be happy. Uh, I have this weird idea that if we suddenly converted everything to these complex AMQP streams, we could at least have assured a delivery and de designation. But everyone looks at me like I'm insane when I say these things. All righty, so. Our next meeting agenda is linked there. That is for the September uh, meeting. I just uh, one AOB. Can, you, yep. can I just before the next meeting? I, I had just a question. Uh, is there any insight about this uh, CentOS stream core OS? Because we start to see ticket popping up in the infra sig and things like that. Does anyone has a bit of info for where it's coming from? Or? I have a little bit of info. I've just been brought into it. Okay, so. Cool. Um, and actually, I, I was going to go into that, that other business after the next meeting because I blanked on what AOB Okay, we can, we can leave it for next time. No problem. Well, I'm so... In a hurry. No, no, no. We, we've got some time. So 
basically what they are hoping to do is take o o uh, OKD and CoreOS and move it a little farther up into the workflow of things. So CoreOS is currently Fedora CoreOS, and then it goes into RHEL. Um, OKD comes after OpenShift. So what they're hoping to do is move, add a project into CoreOS, and I have told them that they need to dot all the T I's and cross all the T's and come in like a, a, any other project would under a SIG, and right now they're gonna talk to the cloud SIG tomorrow. Um, but basically, they're hoping by moving it into the middle of the life cycle, kind of what the goal was from Red Hat's side of moving CentOS up into the workflow chain is to get more feedback and to get contributors and so on and so forth. So they are not ready to go live with anything. This is very early stages. There is going to be a pre presentation at the dojo next week. Um, so the hope is for them to come in, present what they're, ideal situation would be, um, how they can become contributors to CentOS project, and so on and so forth. Um, and it'll be a gradual adding of the project. Nothing's being shoved in right away. Um, and CloudSig may not be the best place for them. Um, there may end up being an application for a container SIG. They could end up asking to be in that alternative images SIG. So it's just going to become another part of you know, CentOS as, a, you know, someone wants to put in another project, you know, a new library or something. So they'll go through everything like just like everybody else. And I am making sure that they go in through every like everybody else. That looks great. I think it could be great for us. Um, so hopefully, you know, the integration and the joining will go smoothly and everyone will be happy and We'll have a nice new project within us. Or actually, two if you think about a Coral S and OKD. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on it? I know I don't have the most information. I've had two quick meetings on it. Um, and I've addressed them more from our community side of things versus the technical side of things because I want to make sure that. It is a welcomed into the community and they are good members of our community. Any other business? Alrighty, everyone gets 10 minutes back to their day. Thank you all for joining. Thanks, Amy. And I'll see okay. you in see you next week, okay. I guess. Yeah. Uh, Thank, you, Thank you all. Travel safe, everyone. Yeah.